Hey everyone, we're back and today we have another DAC for review. Today we have the FMSL DO100 Pro. And I purchased this unit because I had a lot of people sending me messages to compare the FMSL D6S to the topping D50 Mark III. The DO100 Pro is very close to the D6S spec wise, but for an additional $20 also gets you an additional input, HDMI ARC. And I think that's gonna be the main feature that differentiates this unit from the topping D50 Mark III. Let's go ahead and take a look at this unit. So the DO100 Pro has a pretty solid case, similar to that of the topping D70 Pro in terms of the chassis quality. You do get a tiny little bit of flex, or you have zero flex on the topping D50 Mark III. Of course, that's a lot smaller unit. On the front side, you have a rather plain display and a plastic encoder. It feels just fine, nothing special here. A long press on the encoder will power on the unit. And once it's on, giving that encoder a press cycles you through the menu. Once you select the menu option you want to change, then you can give the encoder a turn to go through those options. And let's see what those options are. We have our input and we can turn to select. We have our digital filters, our DPLL, USB version one or two, and finally screen brightness. The screen brightness gives you options one through eight. However, it does not have an automatic mode, so it will never completely shut off. I kept that at the lowest setting of one. On the back side, Starting from the left, we have our analog outputs, one set on single-ended RCA and one set on balanced XLR, and they are both active at the same time. Moving over to the right, we have our digital inputs, our coaxial digital in, HDMI arc in, above that, Toslink digital in, USB on USB-C, and above that, a port for your Bluetooth antenna. Finally, we have our IEC inlet with power rocker. So aesthetically, I really like the size and look of this unit. The only option I would have liked to have seen is an auto feature on the screen so it can time out and completely turn off. The DO100 also does not have an option to change the unit from DAC only to preamp DAC. The unit is always in a preamp mode and the output voltages are a little bit odd. The volume encoder goes from one to 100, but when you have this unit all the way at 100, you're outputting 2.5 volts on the RCA and 5.2 volts on the XLRs. I tested the DO100 Pro and compared it to the topping D50 Mark III and the topping D90 Mark III Sabre via its RCAs. The toppings do have a setting for two volts on the RCAs, whereas on the SMSL, you have to have your volume encoder at 95 to get two volts. At 100, you're outputting 2.5 volts on the RCA and 5.2 volts on the XLRs. So before cranking this one all the way up, consult with your amplifier manual to make sure your amplifier is okay with receiving more than two volts. On the SMSL DO200 Pro, they actually have a little rocker switch where you can switch over from your standard four volts on XLR to five volts. I wish they would have had a little rocker switch on this one as well, or at least have a setting in the menu. So let's compare the SMSL to the closest topping deck in its price range. The topping D50 Mark III comes in at $229, whereas the SMSL DO100 Pro comes in at $219. So $10 cheaper on the SMSL. The SMSL does have an internal power supply where the topping requires an external. The topping is a much smaller DAC, so it's better suited for desktops, particularly if you have limited space next to your computer. In my opinion, the SMSL is better suited for multimedia setup, so connected with your stereo system and your television, in either a living room setup or a bedroom setup. The inclusion of that HDMI arc is a great option for people who want to use their DACs with their TVs. I personally don't use that option, but I know it's a thing that people are asking for and you do get it with this unit. And the reason I don't use it is that I don't pull my music down from the TV. I like to stream my music directly to my streamer, then over to my DAC to get the highest quality sound without having the TV resample it. My TV, a Fire TV, resamples everything to 48 kilohertz, and it won't send through a Tidal high res feed to my DAC. Going through my streamer, I can get the 192 kilohertz out of the DAC. Now my partner on the other hand, she loves the HDMI arc feature. When she loads up the Tidal app, she goes straight to the video section as she's more of a visual person and prefers to listen to music with the videos playing on the screen. This deck just gives you that extra flexibility to choose whatever way you want to listen to. After sound quality, all three of the decks that I compared, the Topping D50 Mark III, the Topping D90 Mark III Sabre, and the SMSL DO100 Pro, all use dual ESS9039 chips. So tonally, their characteristics are very similar, but this is a prime example of how the deck isn't everything in the outcome of the sound. While tonally, they are very similar, they don't present in the same way. And that probably has more to do with the power supplies and the analog output stages. Comparing the DO100 Pro to the D50 Mark III, the main differences I get is that the DO100 Pro is slightly more forward, but the slightest bit, maybe one inch. So your main vocalist pushes in just a touch. Spatially, it's just as wide and just as deep. Those two DACs are pretty much interchangeable. You just have to choose whether you want the arc feature or a more compact form factor 
for your desktop. Now compared to the Topping D90 Mark III, that one's a whole nother animal. While tonally they sound very similar, you get much greater bass impact out of the D90, as well as more vocal clarity and larger and deeper sound stage. So again, all three using the same DAC chips, but the sound that they reproduce isn't necessarily identical. So all in all, I really do love this DAC. I think at the $219 price point, it's a steal. And I think just a couple years ago, you'd be spending four or $500 to get the sound quality that you're getting out of this DAC. So for me, the DL100 Pro is a definite recommend if you're looking to spend under $250. By the way, I did test all three units using the same digital filter and all three at the same volume. That's all I have for this one. And if you want to get a little more detail about the sound of this unit, just go ahead and watch my video on the Topping D50 Mark III. Again, that deck has basically the same characteristics of this unit, except for this one being about one inch, a little bit more forward on the vocal range. And you might even be able to duplicate that with playing with different power supplies on the D50 Mark III. Although I think that one sounds beautiful as well as is. All right guys, next I have a short sound demo for you and I'll see you on the next one.